Cause I know one day I'll soon be gone Hey, so say what you wanna say You can scandalize my name Cause one of these days God's gonna take it in, in the church, uh, in most uh, congregations uh, But as we will see, it is something that is needed uh, Brother Freeman, you and Sister Freeman, welcome. Uh, and welcome to the Jacksons who, who are uh, guests uh, here today. Uh, as I begin, I have to tell you that um, I took a long hiatus uh, from teaching. So you will forgive me if um, a little nerves are involved here. I haven't. Uh, sorry. <laughs> so uh, most of you um, know me, and um, teaching is uh, one of the things that I love to do. I don't like preaching, although I've been a preacher for. Uh, over three decades, but um, I just don't like to preach. I like to teach. Um, and some people say, well, you know, there's no difference between preaching and teaching. It's all about teaching. It's just uh, style is, is the difference. And um, I wouldn't argue with that at all. Um, I, just, I just love to teach. Uh, as we begin... This uh, series of lessons on Christian evidences, I want you to know that um, we, are, we are not going to complete it. We are just going to be doing a, a little part of Christian evidences. I estimate that in the 12 weeks, we probably, we probably have about um, 10 hours, 10 and a half hours total. Uh, and that's not enough time to complete the subject, all right? Um, I used to teach this in Bible school. And so I, I had the challenge also of um, changing some things up, lightening up on some things, because what we're doing is it, I'm, I'm not teaching uh, preacher students um, or student preachers. Uh, but what I'm teaching is the general congregation. Uh, there are some things that I would include if I was, if I was uh, doing uh, this in Bible school that I would exclude here because we, we, we don't, it's not something that all of, we need to know every single thing about, about it. We, but we do need to know some of the main things. But, so uh, as we begin, I would like to... Uh, Ask if anybody knows what uh, Christian evidence is, is. What's that about? Yes. Hold, hold, hold a second. Okay, and as we learned in our marriage uh, seminar yesterday, uh huh, <laughs> those that were there. <laughs> All right. So what I what I'll do is uh, begin with some thought questions. Um, So I guess this one advances the slide. Yes. Let me ask, wh 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 why do we read the Bible? And, you know, this is for everybody. You can, um, can answer. Wh why, why do we read the Bible? Raise your hands if you... All right. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, anybody else? Yes. Say that again. I read the Bible so I can learn what God's instructions is for my life. Okay. Um, to strengthen our faith in God. Okay. For me, it's not only to keep me strengthened, but to keep me grounded in the faith. Okay. And, and uh, I'm going to be asking a series of questions, and some of them are going to be alike, okay? Um, but I just want to get you to think, first of all, um, what, what do we know about the Bible? What do we know about uh, the scriptures? And, and um, what do we know about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? What do we really know? about him. Okay, so I is there a reason why we believe the Bible? And if so, what is it? What, what, why do you believe the Bible? I take it that we are all here because we do believe in the Bible, right? Okay, so why do we believe in the Bible? We believe in the Bible because it tells us our past, tells us our history, tells us our future, tells us our purpose, our identity. It tells us our what our behavior should be, how we should live our lives, and it tells us why that is so important and why Christ died. So the our faith is evidence-based, and that evidence is in Jesus. Okay. Um, I guess it's different for everyone. I believe the Bible because I'm a living example of what the Bible has done for me in my life and the process of change. And I've seen a miracle because I am one. In addition to that, coming at the question as like, why do we even believe that this is the word of God? There are so many other books that talk about faith, whether it's talking about Christian or different denominations um, and Christendom, different religions all together. Um, but if we first, if we believe in God, then it becomes a matter of that, that rock that we're standing on. If that's God's word, then this has to be the rock that we're standing on, believing in God. Like some people are like, oh, I have a relationship with God, but they don't read their Bible. They don't go to church. They don't follow the word. Just believing in God does not tell you how to have a sanctioned relationship with God. And we can't trust something that's vital to our salvation to works of man that have not been proven to be true over and over throughout centuries. Okay. All right. Okay, one, one more, and uh, then... And I totally agree with everything that has been said, mm -hmm. but I read the Bible because at the very beginning, after his creation, it was understood that there's two forces that I'm going to have to deal with, and the forces that I have to deal with is true God presentation, but also he has shown me in, uh, evident uh, in the Garden of Eden, with Eden, that there is another adversary that I'm going to have to challenge. So um, I read the Bible to find out. I know who God is, but to strengthen me also in the area to where I think I'm strong, that I know I'm weak. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. All right, next uh, question is, oh. uh, can we, we talked about believing the, the Bible, right? But can we know that the Bible is true? Is it possible to know without a doubt that the Bible is true? I believe that well, the Bible is true because everything the Bible says that comes forward has came, that was supposed to come, and the things that aren't came yet, they will be coming. And history shows 
But the Bible says, it's taught us that everything God said was going to happen before has happened. And there's still more stuff happening that he said was going to happen. All right. Um, we, can, we can know that the Bible is true also because there are other historical books in history that can verify the events that are in the Bible. Correct. Uh, another question, and this one is, is not on the, on the PowerPoint. Uh, is the Bible just an assortment of stories um, or an explanation of God's dealings with man? You know, there's, uh, there are people who say, well, you know, the Bible is just a collection of, um, you know, different stories that, that have happened. And um, we really can't know. While others say, well, you know, the, the, the Bible explains God's dealings with man. So is the, is the Bible an assortment of books just put together? And, uh, or is it, an, is, is it this explanation, how God explains uh, how he deals with man? Um, I think, not to be um, contrary, um, when, when people are saying like it's just, a, it's just an assortment of stories, mm -hmm. it is an assortment of stories that show the character of God and his dealings with man. Um, but in, seek, in saying, oh, it's just that I think they're seeking to delegitimize what those stories show us. But through the consistency of God's character throughout these stories, because they are people's lives. They're not just characters that aren't real. But through those stories of people's lives, we see God's promises. We see his faithfulness. We see his character, his nature, and the fulfillment of those promises. And so I think that that is part of that, that, that stories that have been verified by Bible scholars and shown this is consistent with the characters of God. These are people that will walk with the Lord, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, all right. Um, next is, um, why should we care whether Christianity is true or not? Why should we care? whether Christianity is true or not. Hmm. Pretty silent. <laughs> yes. We should care whether it's true or not, because mm -hmm. if it's not true, then we did everything in vain. But so it, it would just be vain worship. But uh, I believe it's true in what the scriptures teaches and what I've seen that has happened in this world. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, Spike over here. Oh, you didn't know that, that yeah. that's what he was <laughs> Very bad. Um, I think we also should care because how are we going to pass it on to future generations if we don't care and let's let it go by the wayside? Mm -hmm. um, you know, isn't that our job? Yeah. Um, uh, what I'm trying to say, a lot of religions, what they do, they just pass it on, pass it on, they push it, they keep it out there. I think as Christians, we don't do that as much as we should. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to lose our Christianity and no one no longer believes or knows about Jesus Christ if we don't care. Mm -hmm. So from your answer, you, you're presupposing that uh, Christianity is valid, um, and, and therefore you said what you said, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one. Yes, Sorry. I think ultimately if we care about salvation, not only for ourselves, but mm -hmm. for our loved ones and our friends, we have to care about Christianity because it will determine where we will spend the rest of eternity. Life on earth is one thing, but when you think and believe in the hereafter and where we are destined to be, 
I mean, it takes a kind of human being to not care whether you're going to heaven or hell. Mm -hmm. And I think um, some people don't care about that. But if you care, you will want to know about Christianity and its truth. Okay. Uh, there's one other. And, <laughs> and, and, and then, yeah, perhaps. And, and then, and then we, we'll move on because I've got some stuff to share with you. <laughs> and, you know, and, and, and I want to be able to do that within, almost within the time. I've <laughs> yes, go ahead. Yes, I just wanted to add on to, because it's our soul salvation. We need to care because if we don't care, we're not caring about the death of Christ, the fact that he sacrificed himself for our sins. Um, as Christians, that's what we believe. We believe that Christ died for us, mm -hmm. and he loves us. So if we deem that not to be true, then we're dismissing all he did for us. Okay, so um, I, you notice I didn't say whether an answer was right or wrong or, 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 or whatever it is. I, I just asked questions to determine um, what we know, what we believe, and so on. And I, I believe that uh, in, 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 in the course of these lessons that those same questions will be answered. Okay, so let's move on to uh, the objective. Why are we studying Christian evidences? Well, number one, and somebody said it, to help increase and strengthen our faith. That's one of the reasons we're studying Christian evidences. Uh, and number two, it is to help to prepare us to be ready always to give a defense to everyone who asks, everyone. And this is every Christian being ready always to give a defense to everyone who asks us a reason for the hope that is in us. 1 Peter 3 and verse 15. Uh, we need to be, be able to do that, okay? So, uh, and, and we, we, we'll, we'll get into those, uh, to that scripture uh, a, a little later. But this is, this is the, the reason, uh, these are the reasons why we study uh, evidences, Christian evidences, to help increase and strengthen our faith because there's a difference between thinking that I know and knowing that I know. And so what we want to do is to get from thinking that I know to knowing that I do know. Because when that happens, there's nothing that can shake our faith. Nothing. If you can put us in front of a firing squad, it would not shake our faith. Okay. So <clears throat> let's move on to... Um, why do we believe, then, what we believe? Um, why study Christian evidences? Well, because there is proof that Christianity is rational, it is logical, and it is credible. It, it, it is rational. It could be reasoned. Yeah, uh, any person with... Uh, you, you know, that they, they, they can read and understand, can also read the scriptures and understand what it is saying. Uh, I, I often tell, tell the story about when, when I was a, a child, um, I grew up as a, a, a Catholic. Um, my mother was Catholic, you know, my mother's family was Catholic, my, fa my father's family was Methodist, but my mother's family was Catholic, and so I, I grew up as a Catholic, um, until uh, somewhere around nine-ish or so, uh, my grandfather died, 
And in his will, he left me his Bible as one of them old Bibles in hardcover. And uh, it used to have like illustrations in it, illuminated Bible and so on. And I began reading the Bible. Uh, I got to Exodus. And when I got to Exodus, I started to read the commandments and so on. And at that age, I told my mother, I said, I, I don't want to go back to the Catholic Church. And the reason why is because uh, I read in the scriptures, I don't know what, uh, uh, why it is that I believed that what the Bible said was more important than what I was seeing at Mass. Because in those days, the, even the Mass was said in Latin. Uh, of course, Latin was taught in high schools, um, but your missile, your, your, there was a special book with uh, calls and responses and so on. All that was in Latin. Uh, <clears throat> and I told my mother I wasn't going back uh, because, you know, I read, thou shalt not bow down to any graven image. I read that in that book. But then I was seeing, and, and I used to go, uh, you know, you had to go kneel down before all these graven images and pray to Mary and pray to Joseph and pray to uh, whoever. I just told her, I'm, I'm not going back. I don't want to go back. And she, well, she dragged me along uh, a few times, and literally I, she had to drag me. <laughs> all right? Uh, Ended up that she called me, you said, you're little heaven, you know, and so um, she, didn't, <laughs> she didn't bother with me any longer, even though later on I went to Catholic schools and so on, but I didn't go to um, mass. I didn't go to Catholic uh, masses and, and so on. Uh, because the scriptures... If you believe it, it's rational. Uh, and whether you believe it or not, it's still rational. <laughs> it's also logical. Uh, you know, remember God said, you know, come let us reason together. Uh, he made us as reasoning beings, rational beings. We can think. We can discern for ourselves what is right, what is wrong. But not only that, it's also credible. It, it, it has uh, uh, veracity. There is truth there that no one can deny. Okay? Uh, so... One reason that we believe why we, what we believe is because uh, there is proof that Christianity is rational, logical, and credible. Here's another one. Some religions or faiths are, are based entirely on the teachings of their founders. Um, Confucianism, a set of teachings, uh, is the teachings of their founders, all right? Uh, Islam, teachings of its founder. As a matter of fact, if, if you um, know anything about, if you've researched anything about Islam, um, you note that the... the um, the Quran, as they have it today, was, was not something that was orderly put together. It's, it wasn't. It wasn't. It, it, it's a collection of the, the, the speeches or the, 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 uh, the teachings of Muhammad. And they were written on all kinds of, written on leaves. Uh, and it, they put it all together, and they, and they, they formed what we know now as the Quran. Um, 
I had a Muslim friend uh, back in, in Guyana. And from time to time, we, we, we would talk about um, the differences in our religion and so on. And what happened is, uh, you know, after what, he, he visited the, the church a couple of times, the congregation that I preached at uh, a couple of times. Um, but he began to be curious because, you see, it, it, the way that the Bible is written is, is totally different from the way that the Quran is written. Um, and then there's the, uh, you know, the Hindus, the teachings, they say it came down from, just like Buddhism, from way, way back in the past. And they, they can't discern, they can't tell you what time in the past this thing happened, you know, all, how all these things got together. Uh, but the Bhagavad Gita was, is, is, is a Hindu religious book. And uh, so they don't know how it began. So it, it's almost like a fairy tale story. Once upon a time in a faraway place, <laughs> you know, some, some, some things happen, all right? With Christianity, I, I give you, you give, no, we can nail down time, place, date, every single thing uh, about the beginnings of Christianity. We can do that. So Christianity is based on historical fact as different from other religions. Um, <laughs> with Islam, yeah, th this big religion that has spread and, and they, they have billions of followers and so on. How's it started? One lazy guy. who, because of his good looks and so on, and, and you know, he didn't intend to work, saw uh, and, and got married to this rich woman. Uh, and, you know, she had, um, car, uh, her, hers was a, like a way station for caravans and so on. So you could understand it's like a trading post, right? And, and, a, and a stopover on the way going somewhere else. She's very rich, Khadija. And so he got married to her, and um, uh, because he was lazy in nature, you know, he would um, go up and uh, go away sometimes for um, days and go, be, go away to some place or the other uh, so that he could meditate. And while he was up on the mountain, he claimed that uh, he had this vision, he had this revelation. Now, I, I know somebody who was up on the mountain with a, few, a, a couple other people, <laughs> and there was an, an appearance. And those people could verify that this is what happened. They even heard a voice from heaven saying, this is my son. Hear him. Not Moses, not Elijah. They heard that. So you, they, you, they were eyewitnesses, but they were no eyewitnesses to Muhammad's um, so-called revelation and so on. Uh, <laughs> So Christianity is based on historical fact. If Christianity, um, rather it stands or falls based on the truth of the historical events that happened uh, and are, that are recorded in the Bible. One of the things we need to note that the Bible is a history book. Among other things, it is a history book. It is a record of the history of man 
It's a record of the history of the re re redemptive uh, effort of God to save man from his sins. Right? So it is, it is not, this is not some fairy tale kind of thing, and as we will see. I'll give you some uh, examples. Uh, and so it is based on the truth of uh, these historical events recorded in the Bible, such as the life of Jesus, the miracles of Jesus, the death of Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now the interesting thing is, and I, I, I think um, um, somebody mentioned it earlier, is that not only is uh, the Bible a record of these things, the life teachings of Christ. Of course, there are other things, but we're going to concentrate on, on Jesus Christ, uh, first of all. Uh, but there are other books that are not scripture, that weren't written by, by Christians. Matter of fact, many of them hated Christianity. That confirms that Jesus Christ as a real living figure. They talk about his miracles, uh, not in the way that the Bible talks about miracles, but, but they mention about the marvelous deeds that, that he did. And so you know when you have more than one source uh, confirming an, an event, a particular thing that happened, you know it has to be true. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, because it is, uh, the, the Bible is based on the, um, the person of Jesus Christ and not the teachings, but the person of Jesus Christ. Uh, I, I take you to 1 Corinthians 15, uh, verses 12 through 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 12 through 20. And by the way, we're going to be looking at those other books too uh, la later on, just, just so that you have information because, you know, people come up with all kinds of crazy ideas uh, be, be, just because they, they, they don't want Christianity in their lives. They don't want to be, they, 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 they don't want to be uh, um, told that what they're doing is sin or right. sinful, right. you know, wrong. They don't want that. So if, if we could discredit the Bible, well, then we could do whatever we want to do, right? Okay, so Paul says to the Corinthians, beginning in verse 12, he says, Now if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. Uh, and he, here you see the, um, you, from Paul you're going to see the logic of what he's saying, his, his, um, his apology. We're going, to, we're going to come up to definitions just now. Verse 14, and if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty, and your, your faith is also empty. Notice, if Christ, not if his teachings are burned up, not if the books are burned up, <laughs> right? But if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. Yes, and we have found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ whom he did not raise up, if in fact the dead do not rise. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. There are people today that, that, say, that, uh, that say that Christ isn't risen, uh, that, that his body is somewhere. Uh, even back then, they were saying that, uh, oh, his disciples came and stole the body. And that explains the empty tomb. We, we, we're going to look at the empty tomb. All right? Uh, and if Christ is not risen... Your faith is futile, futile. You are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ, that means those who have died, have perished. 
If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men the most pitiable. And I read verse 20 that says, But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. So you, you, you see, the Christian religion is based on a person as different from an idea. And that person is Jesus Christ. If you can prove that Jesus Christ did not live, he did not die, he, he, uh, uh, if you can prove that he was not resurrected, well then, Christianity falls flat in its face. So, <clears throat> we need to understand this. That, and, and, and today, the reason why uh, I, I believe uh, congregations, churches of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, should be uh, preaching or teaching uh, evidence, Christian evidences. Uh, the longer name is historical Christian evidences. Uh, it's because the Christian belief system is, we, we, we're faced with lots of challenges today, brethren. Uh, I think that um, we, face, we are facing today the greatest challenge that the church has faced in centuries. Uh, we live in an age where information proliferates. It's everywhere. You pluck it out of the air. <laughs> your Wi-Fi, your, you know, uh, all, all of that. Information is everywhere around us. And yet, we in the body of Christ seem to be getting less informed of the things that we need to know. The average Christian today probably knows less than our brethren from the 20th century. There was a time when you, some, you, you heard that somebody was from the Church of Christ. You know that that person knew the scriptures. They, they, they knew what it meant to be saved, you know. Uh, and even if they can't memorize everything else, they know where to go in the Bible. They got the Bibles marked. And they got, after you, you, you talk about hearing and so on, they, they got a note here to go to such and such a book for belief and such, you know, chapter and verse and so on. They knew where to go. They knew what to do. And, 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 and they were fervent in, in, in gaining knowledge, gaining the knowledge of the scriptures. Not just to keep it to themselves. I, I, I remember uh, Maurice was talking about, asked the question, are you, are you a, a reservoir or a river? It's not so that you could be a reservoir of information, but you could be a river that flows with information that distributes it to other people. Technology is supposed to assist us to gain knowledge. Uh, instead, it seems as though we are subject to technology. And uh, we, we, we constantly have to um, check ourselves to see that that is not so. Um, there is, there is there's so much around us. There's a, there's a meme of, of uh, somebody who, um, actually it's not a meme, it's a, just a short video, just to show just how wired we are to technology. Is uh, Somebody made a sound, mm -mm, and you know, like iPhones make, and, and this person is doing whatever they're doing, and they turn and go look at the phone, and then they, they they, they hit a glass and made a tinkling sound, and they turn and look at the phone, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Technology is good, but, it's, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it, you are to be its master, not its slave. You don't have to answer every text. You don't, you don't, have, to, you don't have to do any of those things. Every time the bell chimes or so, you don't have to answer it. As a matter of fact, I tell people that I, I, don't, um, I don't go to bed with my phone. 
my phone is always out of the bedroom. If, 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 if you call me and you don't get an answer from me, uh, and it's late in the, in the evening, although I go to bed very late, uh, and it's very late in the evening, you call me, I don't answer, I'm sleeping. <laughs> All right? Uh, it, it's not going to be my master, okay? Uh, <clears throat> The words of the Apostle Paul to Timothy uh, would be wise for us to follow in this regard. Uh, in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse uh, 13, note what he says to Timothy. He says, hold fast the pattern or form of sound words. We today need to be doing the same thing. Uh, keep it guarded, hold fast to it. You know, uh, the, the, the word sound here means spiritually healthy words. Hold fast that pattern. That's what the Bible gives us. That's what the, the, the Bible uh, helps us even in our own lives that when we speak, that we speak healthy words, uh, words that bring healing. And, he's, and Paul told Timothy, he says, you heard it from me. You heard it from me in faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15, he says, be diligent to present yourselves approved of God, a worker does not, that does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Some of the older versions say study, and people believe it's, you need to open a book and and, and uh, open the Bible and pour through it. Uh, while that is also one of the aims, the better word is to be diligent. In other words, make every effort, make time for Bible study. Um, make time and make sure that you practice what you've learned. That's being diligent. All right. So <laughs> in, in, in Acts chapter 17 and verse 11, a, a verse that uh, many of us um, are familiar with, it, it talks about the Bereans. And they, that they were more noble than those in Thessalonica. All right. Uh, why were they more noble than those in Thessalonica? Because they heard the scriptures from the apostles. All right. And even though he was an apostle of God, they made sure that they searched the scriptures to make sure that what the apostle says was indeed so. How many people today go around saying, well, uh, I believe this because my pastor said this, or my preacher said that, you know? You have to search the scriptures. Remember we said it was logical, it was reasonable, all right? You have to search the scriptures. Uh, so brethren, if, if, you, if your mooring is, is shallow, you know, like boats when they uh, come along and uh, they, they're, they're, they're moored uh, to, to whether it's a, a jetty, a wharf, or, or what, if your mooring is shallow, then storms, uh, when they come, um, they will wreck you. Have you ever seen what happens when there's a, um, um, what's this kind of tide that they call it again? Uh, it, it, it comes and it, it suddenly starts far out to sea. A tide, the tide, tsunami, the tsunami. All right? It comes. And, and, and boats that are in shallow water in the harbor, when that water comes, it lifts those boats and takes them way inland. Right? Because their moorings in the first place were shallow. If the, the rope, the chain, or whatever it is was holding, that was holding that boat was longer, they could raise high without, being, uh, without drifting away. We are faced today, brethren, with Christians who can't defend the faith. Um, many of us 
don't take advantage of the tools uh, that, that are required to defend the faith against, according to Ephesians 6 and verse 16, the fiery darts of the wicked one. Because make no mistake, uh, the failure of, 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 of us to, um, of many Christians to um, search and be, in, be diligent to search the scriptures uh, on, on a daily basis, the, 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 uh, our lack of knowledge is because one of the reasons is because Satan is behind it. He wants you dumb as a Christian. Because once you are dumb, well, then he could push any kind of false doctrine. You, you got to understand that false teachers uh, in, in, in the body are doing not the Lord's work, but Satan's work. All right? That, that's, that, that's who, that, they might even believe that they're doing the Lord's work. Remember, it says somewhere in the scriptures that in the last days, some will say, have we done, have we prophesied in your name and, and all, all of that? All right. And then the Lord will tell them, you're a goat. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you need to build a foundation that will endure throughout life. Or life will be harder than it needs to be your Christian life. Uh, I, I see that my time is almost up, regrettably. I'm now get, starting to get warmed up. Uh, but <laughs> and, and this is the introduction, okay? We, we haven't gotten to definitions. I want you to, re to remember, uh, want us to remember two verses. First uh, Peter 3 and verse 15. Try to memorize that verse being always ready to give an answer. All right, to anyone that asks you, a reason for the hope that is in you, okay? And uh, uh, John chapter 20, excuse me, John chapter 20 and verse 31. And, and I want you to turn there to John chapter 20. I want you to understand that, that the Bible is a history book. It's a book of history. Here is what John says. But these are written that you may believe that, this is the purpose for John's writing, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. Uh, he's, he's saying that the, the verse before, I read 31 first, because in verse 30 he says, truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that were witnesses to what he did, which are not written in this book. There were so many, but John took the time to record, of course, inspired by the Holy Spirit, seven signs, seven miracles of Jesus. If we were studying John, we would look at what each miracle signifies. All right? He says, these are written in, for, for what purpose? That you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And that in believing, in having that faith in him, you might have life in his name. Amen. You can only do that if you have the evidence that indeed Jesus is a, was, was, was a man, came to this earth, the man who was also God, that he was real, a real life person, that he walked the face of this earth. And, and, and let, me, let me just say this as, as, as I'm here, just stick a pin here, that we need to get rid of the I idea that we have of Jesus. Uh, I particularly don't 
That, that, uh, that's why I don't go to, to watch a movie about Jesus. And you won't find anything in, in our house that has a purported picture of Jesus. To me, that's, a, a, um, that's against the second commandment. No graven images. And uh, the reason I said that is that many be people believe that, you know, it's, it's this gentle Jesus. When, when people, artists paint Jesus, he always looks kind of, to me, kind of effeminate, you know, <laughs> this metrosexual kind of individual, long hair, you know. Uh, Yes, soft, white skin, creamy skin, all of that. And Jesus is none of that. He was none of that. The Bible describes him as the son of the carpenter. He, he was a carpenter. You ever, you ever saw a carpenter with soft hands? <laughs> in, in those days, in those days, Carpentry, they, they didn't have uh, electric saws and <laughs> all, all that stuff. You, you had to hack it for yourself. Not only that, Jesus was described as a tecton. Now, a tecton in the Greek was like a master craftsman. What he did was um, they went to the forest, they chose a tree. They looked at which tree would be best if they're going to build a chariot, they're going to build a, a chair, they're going to build a whatever it is. And they cut it down themselves. Maybe they help a couple lot of people, but they cut it down. Split it up. Shaved it, saw, sawed it, and all, all, all by hand. Now you tell me that somebody like that is going to look like, you know. <laughs> Our Lord and Savior had muscles. <laughs> no, he wasn't Mr. Olympia, I don't think. But he was strong. He was strong. You had to be strong to endure that cross. You had to be strong to whip those people and, and send them out of, 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 the, te of the temple. Right? Could you imagine some little sissified person... <laughs> With, with a whip track. You, you get out of here. You get <laughs> That wasn't our Lord. All right? So, so we need to understand that, that we, we, have, we have a Jesus who walked this earth, who was strong, who suffered everything. You, you know, we get colds. He had a cold. Everything that we go through, he went through. Mm -hmm. He was tempted. We are tempted. Yeah. And what he has shown us as a forerunner is that you need to stay faithful to your father, yeah. to the father. Because in all that, he did not sin. Mm -hmm. So Christianity is based on the person of Jesus Christ. Yeah. All right? So uh, I, I want to end here this morning, um, and we want to continue uh, next week. Uh, yeah, any questions? Yes. Hold, hold a second. Hold, yes. Could you just repeat the, the first, it was Peter, the first scripture you wanted us to memorize? Uh, um, first, <coughs> excuse me, first Peter 3 and verse 15. <clears throat> yes. Uh, any, I'll take two questions before we, or, or comments before we stop. If none, we stop. Thank you very much.